Alright, so you know what the Spider-Man premiere? I was coming out of one theater room because, as usual, Screen X fails because Zendaya, Tom, everyone, their skulls are fucked up through here. So she was all coming out of the projection room after it failed to play. Like, behind me, all sneaking, all... And I'm like, why is she always doing that? But then I realized, the new DJI camera we uh, want, the DJI Large Osmo, it's just the ultimate camera because it needs to be paired with glasses you wear that just have gyrometer movement tracking. So then you can just have the camera, like, freaking mounted on your shoulder or wherever it's convenient, you know. So then as you look around, it also tracks and looks at the exact same thing at the same speed because people that are really good at you know craning their necks around like her i'm just saying then she could really you know help film spider-man because she's got that neck it's good for looking through curtains and stuff you know got that nosy neck <laughs> got that no nosy niagara neck no i'm sorry I'm, I'm just... what no, she's actually like kind of like not very black. I don't know, I'm just gonna but point that like, out. at least she admits that like through making a Disney show, I guess that like she's got a problem with spying and like everybody else does too. So I, at least it's out in the open now. That's all I gotta say. You know? Yeah, because contrary to popular belief, people who come up with movie plots don't have interesting lives. Like for example. Uh, me, just like I guess most people when they're younger, like the idea of spying, but usually it's connected to sexuality or wanting to know about new gifts or something useful, you know? So yeah, it's fun, but I guess I grew up a little bit. I don't know, somewhere along the way. Before they ruined it. I mean, you know, I probably won't ever be paid by you fuckers, but I'm so bored with camera designs now. I'll describe the better DSLR, because what do everybody complain about? You have a pop-up screen, and you're looking down at it like this. Breaking you, your neck. Breaking your neck. You're looking, you know, whatever. You fold it out to the side. You're looking to the side while trying to do something. You're holding it, and you're like, oh, the pop-up screen's over there. You know what I mean? So what I was thinking is, if you just had big, like, handles because dslrs already are getting pretty big then it wouldn't matter if it was a little bigger anyways like you know how some of them are if you just grip with either hand you know for example with the other hand too you know either either side and you're holding this camera and not where the lens is attached but actually just the back of the camera itself rotates because they're digital these days, so who gives a shit? Like a chicken neck for the lens? Yeah. yeah. A chicken neck for it. So you're like, sort of like, for example, like, you know how the DJI has something on top of it? Well, this would be the equivalency of, you know, of you know, smooth panning, like how it does because it's an actual robot arm? Yeah. Well, it provides that smooth panning to the lens on the end from the back in the body as you grip it something. Say, you're gripping and you're turning. Well, it'll be smooth because it, it compensates, so it'll it'll do the thing where, you know, it stops a little bit and goes the other direction, like, you know, like how the yeah. DJI, you know, does this, like, stops and, like, tries to stay steady. Yeah, everyone knows the gyrometers. The, yeah, the gyrometers. So you just have the whole back be a big gyrometer region, and then you don't have to fuck around because you can just rotate the back and look at it while yeah. it's still pointing forward <laughs> in horizon-leveled right? mode, and then... You're bringing this DJI mechanic to DSLRs. Fucking pay me, DJI, because I know you're going to be the first one to release this because you always do. Even if it's somebody else claiming they're DJI. Right. Because they've made some stupid things recently that are not DJI. But all I was going to add was this design allows people to take their camera lenses they're used to working with and sticking them on the chicken neck end. And then it still does the whole thing where auto focuses with them or whatever. Yeah. While also having the gimbal. It's great. Because once again, all you're doing is using the actual back of the camera. You have no implementation that would put any stress on the lens because the lens is supposed to be pointed any direction and not tear off the camera. Because if a lens is designed that badly, holy shit, is it a bad lens. That's too huge. Like, it just yeah. don't go over a certain weight limit size of lens. Well, yeah, of course, because... Then you're what you're trying to use the chicken necking while having a giant long distance camera lens on yeah, the end. Yeah, that's of it. not gonna work. That's not gonna work. This is for action cam style DSLR filmmaking for for or what? nature stuff. Nature or stuff, right? 
So my point here was, you know, for this little bitch um, camera conspiracies that used to be called camera talk, um, is that because people like him, like he's a fruititarian who like, you know, is afraid of like everything in sight and breaks his bones on everything, then for example, you're trying to record something, right? And you like, you know, the, the, the grips on either side that you're using, you have like a button that locks it right and a button that locks it a different direction. So you say, for, for example, can lock it from going up and down. Yeah. So there's none of that. So it'll try to minimize all of that with one button when you start running. And then another button would say, for example, lock it at the direction you've, you know, gimbal turned it to. So it stays that direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's horizon mode, same as this with all the settings. So in a practical situation, he'd be using his little bitch ass, you know, like chicken neck because he doesn't eat any chicken, looking down at something and he'd like be like, um, oh man, I want to lock it there because I'm just going to keep, you know, like looking down while I'm locking forward while like following a snake that's going on the ground or something. So he can just follow it while just looking at it, you know what I mean? Like straight on with a, like whatever angle of wrist he wants, he wants to be locked at and unlock it and then relock it so that he can be looking down without breaking his whole spine and be engaging his muscles such as they are in a way that actually prevents him from getting fatigue. Any cameraman would agree. Yeah, and, and this feels fun to everyone. It makes it accessible because it's like they're grabbing it with both hands. They're really getting into it. I keep repeating. Also, coming from below with the DJI camera like it does tears into your lower abdomen, the new DJI whatever they call it, where it has an extending arm. It Raptor, really moron. I, but, but you see, this pulls on you. It needs to be the other way around you see so it goes up and out and the camera looks down like this like you know it's looking down so in in functionality same type of design for a dji camera it should be doing that upward and then it's always be kind of looking down because it makes everything look cooler and actors and everything yeah in that it certain does. way so as you go out it, it goes and angles itself downward so it's not actually interrupting anything because the other way around doing doing it this way it's ripping everything in people's bodies. They can't support that. It's pulling down on them. But if it goes up completely while the lens looks down, then you get height and distance at the same time with a calculated equation. Yeah, yeah. What I don't know if he got across clearly, which I'll mention briefly, is just that we don't need DJI or any other brand to make an entire DSLR camera body necessarily. Just have a gimbal arm. Yeah, the gimbal arm screws right onto your, you know, lens on the front place, right onto the front there. Then the lens screws onto the other end of your DJI arm. So then it just, your current DSLR turns into a DJI camera magically. And then you have the grips. Well, I just recommended it even simpler. Why wouldn't it just go right into your regular lens mounts? Just screw right into there. Because That's what I said. Like, yeah, you made it sound like it was going on the lens, though not in the lens mount, you know, hole. Yeah, you screw it into the lens mount hole, and then the lens goes on the other end of the DJI arm. Yeah, and then it the sends the signal the, yeah. through magnetically slash wires, however they prefer to do it. You know, lots of magnetism, but All preferably. All the have these digital drivers now. And, of course, the magnetic plate that full fits right close to the camera where you screw it in at the beginning of the DJ arm mount piece that then creates that additional magnetic cushion feel dynamically so everything's smooth as it pistons around and adjusts for your, you know, crappy-ass walking style. Yeah, exactly. I probably talked way too long earlier in the video, but the point I was trying to get across of why he could just look at the screen and move it any direction with any DSLR he wanted, that stupid guy who's obsessed with DSLRs, camera, fruititarian, is because, like, the handles on it, this is why I was saying it, they're, they have engagement motors in them, so it turns the whole DSLR, like, you know what I mean? That's why I was saying you need a bigger back to power them. And that's why it just looks whatever direction it wants while you move the screen. You know what I mean? He has his same camera, but at the same time, so you it want can flip big all old the way under, around, back, front to him, yeah. and you know, look up and down, so he doesn't have to break his little spine and have it crushed up close to him.
as it turns with the handles so we can, you know, it turns whatever direction while the handles stay the same so we can... But I'm still so confused. What do you mean? So it can flip around. You're holding both handles. Then it flips around. What I need. So it's facing the person rather than the scenery? I don't understand. Yeah. How? Think about the rotation. You have it on the the back right. Yeah. Because you wanted the undermount. I was talking about for yours. It rotates like ball joints, so then it like it goes underhand as you rotate it to where you like lug it up the other way. You see, like it comes from around there up into there as it comes from the front to the back. So you like let it drop and bring it around over into here, you know, from the back. So then you're holding it by the two handles because they're powerful. so you're saying. I still don't get it. I don't understand what you're saying. I don't. I don't. I don't know how that would twist and suddenly be oriented upside down, wouldn't it? It would be upside down. So you'd have to edit it in post, except for the fact that you're designing the DSLR for it. So the second it does it, like how a DJI would do when he yeah. just flips the video on the right side. Okay, I'm sorry. I was limiting my own imagination with that. So you explained it now for my dumboness. Yeah, I'm saying it's still huge amounts of hulking strength, but in comparison to everything he's doing, putting DSLRs on poles and all this crazy shit people are doing, yeah, it's better because you're flipping it around so you can just use it like... Yeah. Well... And it's also all powered within the handle so you can get whatever angle you want on it and grip cl- right close to it. I w- okay, here's my thing. If you want a cheap just handles for your DSLR system body that snaps on there and works for whatever system it is, whatever body, you can be 3D printed or whatever. If you want just a basic one you could 3D print yourself, then the handles would just be those bars with the snap points so you could just, you know, not that cheap, like the tent pegs where you squeeze it on either side, not that cheap, but, you know, an upgraded version of that like they have so then you can spin the basic handles that are 3D plastic molded nicely around 180. So then for this cheaper model of the handles, you could then just spin those around each 180 and just turn your whole camera around 360. And then, or 180 or whatever, and then just be holding it, holding the handles that way with it facing you instead yeah. of away from you. That's just a really cheap version model. That I kind of like the idea of. Yeah, where you're you're literally spinning it on the handles to where it goes flat ways instead of having rotating spheroids that are like engaged with the. Well, it's not spinning pack. at all. The handles are spinning. That's what I was saying. I was saying the handles though. You're saying it's basic, so it's a flat engagement point rather than powered gimbal balls that you you know have to work through having a bigger battery pack on the DSLR. You're still acting like it's too complicated. All it is, is it's just handles on the case body that just... Well, you see what that I... Just, that just spin around, and the body doesn't do anything. It's not doing anything. What I'm, I'm agreeing with uh, sorry. you, what I'm saying is, where the handles uh, go, they attach, you know, to it, right? There's points on them where there's spherical, like, ball bearings. Yeah. That have electrical engagement, like, magnetically. So then you can rotate around how you want to the handles at any point, and they, they hold there. Oh, okay. So I'm saying it's, like, powered, so it's, like, you know, part of the battery of the DSLR, so you can plug it into it, and that's why I was advising a bigger battery, so you can flip it around with the engagement of the rotating thing, so then you're getting different muscle engagement that's not as difficult. So it, it fu- so what you're saying is you're things. guiding it by moving it a certain way, so it senses it and flips it around at you. That's what I'm saying, it engages. Okay, now I understand, power. wow. Well, I was trying to get that gimbal-like yeah. feel to an entire DSLR, yeah. DSLR, and I was saying stop gripping it like you're going to breathe down its like neck you need like some sort of handles you can put on it yeah that are all engaged and locked in and that should of course just be an option with just the buttons too 
that's just engaged top and bottom for maximum grip so you don't have to move anything. But I'm just saying it would help move it from side to side if you could engage it that way. Yeah. And do up and down and stuff because it would make it more stable. Yeah. If the spheroid's right, it's locked in the middle of them at each point. So then they bounce and take it within the spheroid. You know, True, bounce. yeah. Automatically, each, each ball yeah. bearing that's got a lot of electricity going into it, hence the bigger battery pack. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, if you want the, your supercharged version is pretty cool sounding now that I understand it. 